Good afternoon, students. Today we go to the next level of stability analysis, and we call that stability of frames. Okay. Now let me tell you what's a frame. What a frame is composed of. You all know what is a column. A column is an axial member subjected to axial compressive forces. Under these compressive forces, it undergoes buckling or crippling, depending upon the length of the column. Now, when a column and a beam is combined that is when a structural member can undergo the combined effect of bending and buckling we call that this was a column and this is a beam column which is both a beam as well as a column. I've already circulated a lecture on beam column by uh, which was available with me, not recorded by me, but which was available with me for your knowledge. And if you want, we I can take another lecture myself on beam column. Before that, let me finish off with frames. So this is a column, this is a beam column. A beam column will be subjected to both flexural loading as well as axial loading. Now when I combine both, when I combine both, when I have a beam as well as a column and their combinations, I have a frame. So a frame is basically a supporting structural member that can take both axial and uh, flexural or the bending loads, axial and transverse loads rather and it's a combination of beams and beam columns. Now, what are the different types of frames we have? So these frames are generally called as, these types of frames are generally called as portal frames. And portal frames are of two types. First one is a non-sway type. What is a non-sway type column uh, or, or frame? Suppose you have a frame and you have symmetric loading on it. Then you can see it won't uh, because it's, it's a fixed DT here. I go like this and it takes a deflecting pattern like this. And if there is a load at the center also, the same thing. We'll take a pattern. So this is a non-sway type frame and this is typical of symmetric loading. So we call this a symmetric frame. Then suppose the loading is not symmetric. We will have a frame. that displaces, that is I have a 
load acting like this so definitely that will have a displacement this delta will be equal to delta this type of frame is called a sway type of frame not only that there is one more another load coming at the center then this goes under goes of course this is a fixity so it has to go like this so it undergoes something like this so these are typically sway frames and they are typical of asymmetric loading Just like you had symmetric loading in the other case, for sway frames we have asymmetric loading. And now further for our problems, let us let us concentrate. On non sway frames. So before we go to non uh, sway frames and their analysis, let me explain you what are what are stability functions. So let us start with stability functions. What are stability functions? Stability functions are normally we uh, uh, have two types. One is the primary stability functions. Then we have secondary stability functions. Primary stability functions are normally represented by R and C. Secondary func sec functions are derived from primary functions. And R functions of R and C. They are represented by alpha and beta. So secondary uh, stability functions are derived from primary functions and they are functions of R and C represented by they are represented by alpha and beta. Now let me explain you the case of, let me explain you with an example. So before we start, we need to have stability coefficients. We call that stability influence coefficients in terms of stability functions. Only when we know the stability influence coefficients, we can formulate the stability matrix for a frame. We know that frame A is a combination of many structural members. So the joints will be the possible places of the degrees of freedom. So when we put all the joints together, we should definitely get a matrix. So the matrix will definitely have components. These components of the stability matrix or the uh, stiffness matrix, we call that as stability influence coefficients. We should be able to formulate the, the components of the matrix element by element 
and then we have to we we have to uh, really write the complete matrix of the given frame and analyze it so how do we write a matrix element by element so let us start the case with a prop cantilever beam so i take a prop cantilever beam that is fixed at one end and that is uh, supported at the other so i call this as ab and the length of this prop cantilever is l say this is only an example to write the stability influence coefficient so the possible degrees of freedom are this point this is fixed so we don't have a degree of freedom the only degree of freedom we have is here and at b we have a moment induced and i call that moment as m not so i have i don't have any slope here but i do have a slope here and i call that slope as theta b say slope at b i call that as theta b now let me call this as point i and let me call this as point j when i uh, the when there is a moment induced at point a uh, b at b that is m not the influence of that is seen at a at a there will be an induced moment which will be equal to m not by 2 which is proved in structural mechanics already we needn't have to do the proof for that that is already proved in structural mechanics so when i can give a moment here there is an induced moment here because of fixity which is represented by m0 by 2 so now the moment induced at j because of j is sjj is moment stiffness which is given by the moment by its angular displacement theta b and which is already proved as 4e by l what you have to understand here is this is the moment at j because of the moment at j but there is also a moment at i because of j which should also be equal to sji and that will be definitely 1 by 2 of sjj that will be equal to 2 ei by l okay so the moment induced at j due to j is 4 ei by l and sij ij ji it is reduced by a factor 2 so we have c is equal to 2 and r is equal to 4 this is how we write r and c because this is totally a flexural problem there is absolutely no confusion but if we can consider this as a prop beam again with axial load also coming up then the entire scenario changes this is theta b i have m not and i don't know what is induced here i really don't know what is induced there i only know that there are reactions are a and are b here but if this is moment coefficient then i have a force coefficient written as k j j is equal to m not by theta b which will be equal to r e i by l and k i j will be equal to k j i j will be equal to k j i that is equal to c r into c e i by l okay this is the basis on which we are going to 
solve problems on state solve problems on frames so next class we'll be taking up an example and we'll be trying to solve the example to find out r and from r we'll try to find out the critical load pcr thank you